So this is a slide that gets at uh, a brief summary of research, primarily from psychology over the past decade or two decades about uh, associational differences. That is, if you divide people into those who believe conspiracy theories versus those who tend not to, are there differences that we can pinpoint on a psychological level? Uh, and there are indeed a number of different themes that have come out of uh, numerous studies looking at this. And I should plug uh, uh, other people, including some very prominent researchers there in the UK, like Karen Douglas or Dan Jolly, uh, who are doing this kind of work. So some of the findings from that research, they've summarized as saying this is related to psychological needs. And so some of the psychological needs that seem relevant to why people might embrace conspiracy theories, uh, here's the first one, need for certainty, control, or closure. This is an idea that conspiracy theories, despite their conspiratorial nature, or even at times their outlandish nature, sometimes they do provide a kind of tidy narrative that helps us make sense of the world. I think this is particularly true in, in, during the pandemic, where even now, two, two years into it or three years into it, but certainly in the early part of the pandemic, uh, there was just so much we didn't understand about this new global threat. Uh, and, and, and a kind of pandemic threat that we have not experienced in our lifetimes. So in that sense, conspiratorial narratives sometimes can provide a relief to that anxiety of not knowing. Uh, so that's one, one uh, finding that's been found from uh, psychology research. Need for uniqueness is another one. This is the idea that people sometimes gravitate towards conspiracy theories because they feel like now they are among the privileged few who really understands the true nature of the world and what's going on in it. Whereas the rest of us are blind, we're sheep, we've been blue-pilled, this sort of thing. And there's something sort of uh, stimulating about being privy to that information. There are also different psychological traits that have been associated with conspiracy theory beliefs, certain attribution biases, for example, something called hypersensitive uh, agency detection or teleologic bias. This in a nutshell can be summed up by saying, this is a need we have that, that some of us have more than others uh, to attribute uh, higher causes to events rather than accepting that things happen by chance or by random or by coincidence. So people who are more likely to read into meetings or connect the dots as it were, uh, are more likely to believe in conspiracy theory beliefs. There is also, again, I don't wanna uh, overplay this idea of mental illness. That's not really what we're talking about here, but people who have a kind of paranoid worldview, the idea that the world is a, a threatening place, that people aren't to be trusted, that we're in danger, those kind of things, as we might expect, uh, or have overlap with people who uh, have conspiracy theory beliefs. There's been recent research uh, primarily by um, a psychologist named Gordon Pennycook here in the US on something that's actually called bullshit receptivity. Uh, and it turns out there's a number of different definitions of bullshit. The one that Pennycook uses is something called pseudo profound bullshit. The idea that some of us tend to uh, derive meaning, uh, to tend to perceive profoundness in statements that actually aren't really very meaningful at all. That's another psychological trait that's associated with uh, conspiracy theory ideation and helps to explain why sometimes, um, the, even though the internal logic of conspiracy theories doesn't always make sense, that might still be appealing to some consumers nonetheless. And the antithesis of, of much of what we're talking about is analytical thinking. So uh, another way of saying that rather than antithesis is that the antidote to conspiratorial thinking is analytic thinking. So if we possess lower levels of uh, analytical thinking, that seems to place us at greater vulnerability to conspiracy theory belief. And conversely, if we have greater levels of analytical thinking, then that is somewhat protective. And I think that's is a very important point because unlike many of the uh, other cognitive foibles that I've reviewed on this slide, analytical, analytical thinking really, I think, should be thought of as a skill rather than an individual trait. This is, analytical thinking is a learnable skill. Uh, and in fact, mostly what analytical thinking really entails, and this is where it relates to misinformation, is slowing down. 
instead of immediately seeing a tweet and saying, yeah, this makes sense and I'm going to share it, slowing down and saying, wait a minute, maybe this is bullshit. Maybe it's not right. Maybe this there is some third party who has an ulterior motive. Uh, and thinking through that and thinking, maybe this is not correct information. Uh, and, and, and then looking uh, more, more deeply at, at, the, at the evidence. Um, so th I think that's really uh, a good way of understanding what, what are some of the things that can protect us against conspiratorial beliefs. Uh, but analytical thinking, I want to make clear, even though it's a skill, it is not an intuitive one. And particularly when we start talking about science, it's much the same way. The scientific method is not an intuitive way that human beings think. It's something that we're taught. And I would argue that we're not taught all that well you know, from grade school up, uh, you know, those of us who don't become scientists. So, so anyway, that's my overview to answer this sort of question of why do are people drawn to this? There's no one reason, and, and I should make clear that, that all of the things that, I, that, that are on this slide, like need for uniqueness, those are needs that we all have. So this is a really question of degree uh, and, and magnitude rather than saying, oh, you know, all conspiracy theory believers have needs for closure. Well, we all have needs for closure. But relative to those who believe conspiracy theories and don't, these are quantitative differences that we see.